I always knew the heavies were a bit strange, but I never really guessed to what extent. And then they went and found a bear with mange, lying sleeping sound and fast behind a tent. The story goes they weren't completely sober, and the blows they'd taken really weren't that light. And so on this evening of October, they chose to turn that bear into a knight. They decided pretty quick to call him Ursus, and shoved a sword and shield into his hands, and paused. And there would not be so many verses if the bear then chose to use his claws. But you see, they also got the bear drunk, and he decided he liked the drink they had. And so he did not throw away this weird junk. Thus Ursus stayed rattan and armor clad. When they finally brought him to the list field, Ursus proved to be a paragon of might. Not one of them could make it past his great shield as he knocked the mats down left and right. And now at this point, you may be wondering how the hell no one tried to intercede. Well, that's just the power of the good bling. With the white bells, they follow where you lead. <laughs> oh. Yes, twas knights who had found and armed this drunk bear, so no one else was questioning the sight. They might have thought the Snoopy had some weird hair, but plenty of them forget to shave, all right? <laughs> well, Ursus may have been a one-hit wonder, except for late that night around the fire. One of those knights cried out with voice like thunder that Ursus Arctos was his brand new squire. He brought Ursus to event after event, managing so many car rides with some meat. On the battlefield, Ursus would not relent, and thus soon a sergeant he was decreed. And so it went for months and months of fighting, the name of Ursus earning more renown, till the king and queen found themselves inviting a f***ing bear to come and compete at Crown. <laughs> <laughs> On tourney day, her sister tall and ready, with sword and spear enormous in their size. It left all others feeling quite unsteady. It's easily did Ursus win the prize. And while some at first were feeling apprehensive, it wasn't long before Ursus won their hearts. His Vocabulary wasn't that extensive, but no king alive can master all the arts. <laughs> oh. And truly, Pensick was his crowning glory, where he led his army standing in the front. Relentless did he seek his every quarry, and the Ursine king was favored in his hunt. Thus far and wide, King Ursus was exalted, as everyone kept singing of his fame. But soon the celebrations would be halted when the POD heard of this king's true frame. For there was a man who was known to kill bears, might know him by the name of John. And when the news reached Corpora's upstairs, he declared that soon Ursus would be gone. But brave Ursus ruled alongside a fair queen, a pelican who spoke words of silk and steel. Hearing this news, she would not remain serene, and she bargained for his life with this appeal. Turn away, O oh bear killer, I implore you, lest I muster all my forces out to war. Cook chatelaines and seneschals all who will ruin all your events forevermore. <laughs> the feasts will all be burnt or not existent, the paperwork all lost or set on fire. I assure you we can be quite persistent, so let alone this great bear we all admire. John was not so foolish as to test her, and so he declared the bear would stay alive. But his pride, she did not completely debt her, that he would just let King Ursa stay and thrive. He and the boards met in quick conversation, and within a day they laid out their decree. The society was a human nation. The Spanish King Ursus would forever be. With this decree, the kingdom was left grieving that to King Ursus they had to say farewell. But the chivalry found themselves conceiving one final way in which they could rebel. They took a poll from all across the great realm, and an answer they quickly ascertained. On that last day, while wearing his best helm, 
Sir Ursus Rex, he proudly was proclaimed. And now at last you all have heard the story, how once a bear and knighthood did obtain, a knight who was in all things laudatory, a king unmatched and beloved in his reign. You may be wondering what happened to him. The exile of Sir Ursus still went through. He only took the bells held in his forelock. Going to the woods, he bid us all adieu. Not one of us has seen him since that sad day. To be a lost and lonely legend is his fate. But for his return, we all gladly do pray. For service as we forever will await.